everyone. Dave Barlow here with the gang from Sell for One Percent. Big Mike Hopper and Jamie Barlow. And Jamie, we've got our house of the week this week, a very interesting one for sure. A ton of history. And the cool part is the house is still standing. What do you got for us? Yeah, this house was uh, part of the Underground Railroad, as it were. Um, and it is the Kelton Stately Manor uh, located at 586 East Town Street. Um, right downtown. So yeah, there is a, a ton of history with it. Um, it's actually been preserved with a lot of the family's artifacts that had lived there from 1760 to 1975. Um, so there's actually three generations of one family that lived at this house and it's preserved with their artifacts for kind of a continuous record. Um, That's cool. Of yeah, historical information, including things like letters, furniture, business cards, paintings, um, textiles, etc. Um, and so it, it is cool. It's kind of a running record. And then also, you know, from the three generations has all that stuff kind of included from different time periods. So yeah, that's very uh, cool. What year yeah, was it not, built? I'm sorry. It was built in 1760. 1760 wow that's pretty old yeah um so 80 percent of the current furnishings are from the family which is the kelton family of course um Fernando I, wonder, I won't wonder i'll just simply say it you've heard of miller kelton road yeah road downtown so they're keltons is uh, the roads named after them awesome yeah yeah, Fernando Cortez Kelton bought the property from the United States government, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, back when the United States government was selling property. Um, that was in 1852, he built the home. Um, and him okay, and his, so it was built in 1852. 1852, oh, yeah. Okay. So, I don't know why it's, the facts I got say artifacts from 1760 through 1775. I think it's like they still had family heirlooms and stuff from the generations before that were actually in the house and has still been preserved even though it was built in 1852. It's stuff that they brought with from their family I believe is, is what it was. So it has stuff from 1760. That would make sense. Okay. Yeah. 1852 cool. was built. They moved in and um, Sophia and Fernando Kelton raised their family there. Um so only one family has ever lived in the house. Um, and the Kellens held deep anti-slavery ideals. There was two uh, runaways, Martha Hartway and her sister Pearl, that arrived at the house in 1864. And Sophia and Fernando sheltered them. So the girls actually escaped a plantation in Powhatan County, Virginia. Hmm. So they were heading on that long road north towards Canada and found some solace at the Kelton home. That's crazy. So up until that point, the Keltons had not taken in slaves until these two little girls showed up on the front doorstep. Right. And then um, they got involved with, that's cool. And then Pearl, the older sister, eventually left on her journey to Canada but her younger sister, Martha, stayed because she was ill and that was actually then raised in the Kelton home. That's neat. Yeah, very cool. Uh, Fernando was in the mercantile business and was the first wholesaler in Columbus. No kidding. Um, so it makes sense. He has a, a road with his name on it. Probably doing pretty big business. Mm-hmm. Um, and then his wife, Sophia, like many other Victorian women at the time, managed the household staff and was uh, a skilled painter um, with her granddaughter, Grace, reminiscing that Sophia had a carriage house with a kiln where she would fire her painted dishes. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Uh, Grace moved into the house upon her grandmother, Sophia's death in 1888. Um, and then had five girls that were raised in the home. Um, and actually her aunt, 
Isabella Kelton owned the house through a um, a death certificate. That's who it transferred to. And so upon her death at the age of 101, hmm. Grace purchased the house for $30,000 from the Bell's estate. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> it's just crazy listening and hearing those prices and stuff. Because I know that's a lot of money back then. Um, yeah, back in the day. Yeah, that's a lot of money. Adjusted for inflation, that's $1.7 million. Yeah, right. good grief. I'm sure. That's crazy. Um, Grace was renowned as an interior decorator in Columbus. Um, and unfortunately died on Christmas Day in 1975 in which she had entrusted the property to, Colum to the Columbus Foundation with the stipulation that her family's home be preserved and used for educational purposes. Okay. And so on July 4th, 1976, the Junior League of Columbus uh, took on the renovation and restoration of the home and garden. And after three years, opened the doors to the Kelton House Museum uh, in 1979. So still under still under the care of the JLC uh, today, um, and they have a bunch of programs that offer you know things like a house tour, special events, educational opportunities, and an active volunteer program that provides uh, a training ground for individuals interested in historic preservation, decorative arts, American history, and museum management. That house got it all. It does. I thought one of the, the coolest <laughs> ones, I thought one of the coolest things was that Fernando Kelton was such a respected abolitionist um, that he was a pallbearer for Abraham Lincoln's um, funeral when his remains were brought through Columbus on their way to Illinois. Wow. That's that's pretty cool. It's cool that's that pretty, they... Yeah, pretty historical all, for sure. Went through all the different states and they have, uh, yeah, his armband and his sash or, or ribbon that he wore. Right. Uh, framed in the house. Oh, wow. That might be one I have to go see. I mean, I didn't I, know anything about it. So I was just thinking the same thing, Dave. I was like, I'd be yeah. cool to take the girls to and stuff. Yeah. And the, 80 to 90% of the furnishings in the house were owned by the Kelton family. So that's like, it's not like staged with stuff. It's like actual things yeah. that have been in the house for over 150 years. That's wild. Yeah, 1752. Yeah, that's... That's all. That's two hundred and fifty. That's two hundred and so, yeah. That's wild. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's uh, that's before the United States was the United States. Yep. So that's cool. That was a good one, Jamie. That's yeah, a good that's one. one. That's an old one, and it's cool. They had. Uh, I'd like to think. Uh, I'd like to think I would have the same sentiments about slavery, but it seems like. Uh, back in that day and age kind of a rarity well and it, i mean it sounds like it's a long family list of working for you know social rights because it looks like his his uh his son frank married this lady who was a hardcore suffragist uh for the women's movement at ohio state university so there's a lot of they did a lot of good <laughs> yeah 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 we'll have to plan a trip We'll take the grandkids and go. Uh, I mean, and that's one of the cool things. There, there's so many things right here in our own backyard, just within Ohio, that we don't know much about. Yeah. Uh, everybody, oh, I want to go to London or Italy or, you know, and those are the, I wouldn't mind doing that too. But these are just like simple day trips mm -hmm. uh, to go check something out like that. I, very cool. So I appreciate it, Jamie. Thank you for bringing that one. Yeah. Thanks, Jamie. My pleasure, guys.